When was the last time you thought about how the energy you use gets to you? How electricity flows to your TV? Or how natural gas gets to your stove so you can make your mac and cheese? It may seem like it just does, but the reality is we rely on a complex transportation network to get energy from where it's produced to where it's needed. And that can be harder than it seems, especially since there are multiple forms of energy. Demand varies, and sometimes it's even challenging to get it to remote parts of the country. So we have to get a little creative. From power lines and pipelines to trains, trucks, and ships, let's take a closer look at how we move all our energy around and what it takes to get it to people when and where they need it. We'll start with electricity. With a complex network of generation facilities, transmission lines, and related communication systems, the electrical grid is technically the biggest machine humans have ever built. Sorry, Hadron Collider. Once electricity is generated from hydro stations, wind turbines, solar panels, natural gas, and coal, it needs to get to us when we flick on the lights, power up a laptop, turn on the washer, or heat up a hot pocket. You get it. And sometimes that requires moving it over vast distances. To do that, sources of energy are connected to the grid, where the electricity moves in large volumes through high-voltage transmission towers and overhead power lines. You've seen them. Enormous iron giants that crisscross through fields and along roads. Then the electricity is sent through smaller distribution lines to our homes and businesses. That sounds pretty simple, but because we generate electricity from many sources and need to transport it in multiple directions, our grid is actually a pretty clever system of two-way transmission and communication. It's smart and flexible and lets all the power plants, substations, meters, and appliances Monitor how much power is needed compared to how much is available or needs to be produced at any given time. Depending on demand and even weather conditions, the energy mix in the grid changes. For example, when the sun isn't shining, there's less solar added to the mix. So to meet demand spikes, we rely on the power stations where we can dial things up. Like electricity that needs to be moved, we need to move oil and natural gas, but through a different kind of grid. One made up of pipelines, terminals, trucks, trains, and ships. When oil and natural gas are extracted, they first travel to storage tanks and processing facilities through gathering pipelines, before they're transported over longer distances through larger transmission pipelines, powered by pumps and compressor stations dotted along their routes. These pipelines are like an energy superhighway. In Alberta alone, there are more than 422,000 kilometers of pipelines. Put end to end, that pipeline network would circle the Earth more than 10 times. When natural gas gets to its destination, it's distributed via smaller pipelines to homes, businesses, and industrial facilities to run our furnaces, stoves, barbecues, machinery, equipment, and boilers. But natural gas can also be pressurized into a liquid form and moved by rail cars, transport trucks, and ships. Oil, on the other hand, is moved through pipelines to refineries where it's made into gasoline, jet fuel, chemicals, and other petrochemical products. Some goes directly to refineries here in Canada, but a lot of it, more than 3 million barrels each day, goes via pipeline to the U.S. for refining. Trains and trucks are typically used to deliver refined products such as gasoline to product terminals near major markets. Petrochemical products derived from oil and natural gas are transported by rail, marine vessels, and trucks, where it is then used to manufacture a variety of things we use every day like fertilizers, plastic products, household cleaners, paint, clothing, electronics, and more. And we can't forget coal. Once coal is mined, it's cleaned to remove dirt, rocks, and other unwanted materials. Using conveyors, trucks, and trams, coal is moved from the mine and shipped primarily by rail, barge, and large ships for industrial, commercial, and consumer use. So the next time you reach for the TV remote, turn the lights on, fill up your car, or charge your laptop or cell phone. Remember, there is a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes 24-7 to not only produce that energy, but to actually get it to you when and where you need it. <laughs>